Hi and welcome back to MD Model Works. Now, um, <coughs> where where are we? Where wings are together. Um, everything is getting to the point now where we're putting smaller parts together after we've done today's section. So the next part is literally to glue these wings on and get them settled in. Now I'm looking at the fit and the fit is extremely good. There are one or two little gaps uh, just about, hang on, I wonder if I'll pick it up just about there as you can see those gaps will fill once glued and we can sort them out from there so what we're going to do we're going to get this wing in place for now what I'm going to do all I'm going to do is glue the top sections first we'll leave the, the bottom section until the very last when this glue is dried, it'll probably be tomorrow. And just put our glue in, make sure she's in, and just close her up. Then, what we'll do, we'll just get a dry brush and go across the top just to get rid of the bubbles that are formed like so. Now if we just hold that for a few seconds for it to bite which it has nicely and then we'll put that just to one side just for a little while as what I've done stand that there so it's not being moved around line that up a bit better than that. That didn't line up too brilliantly for some reason. So I just have to hold that for a few secs just to get that to grab. And keep straight like that. Lovely. I think that'll be fine. Okay, I'm gonna leave that to one side, let that dry. And we'll put the other one on make sure everything else fits okay in the meantime I've done the drop tanks and what I'm going to do this afternoon is the basics of the drop tank um, very simple to do I want them to look a little bit used I don't want them to be perfect so Let's just have a look, clean out all the sand and dust that we have in here, just use a little blade just to take those out of there, that has been sanded, it was just glued as usual, we'll sand it down and no problems. So I'm going to get prepared, then I'm going to come back straight away, I'm going to spray these pair up. That's, it's not going to be anything particularly special to see, but it's just how I do drop tanks um, using a wash, and we'll go from there. Okay, right, get it clear up. Right, back in a few moments. Okay, welcome back. Right, now I'm gonna prime as I always do there's been talk again on Facebook prime or not prime the reason that I prime is mainly to see if I've made a boo-boo just to see what the lie of the land is ready for the top coat but there's a difference on this I mean you're not really going to see a lot I'm, I'm using out 
302 grey primer and filler from Alcloud 2 it's a very very thin down type of Mr. Surfacer if you like so that's that sort of thing but all I'm going to do is just put a fine coat of the primer right over now as I said you're not really going to see this to an extent where the camera's going to pick it up I mean there's no real reason to film this it's just me priming but we're doing the whole model so I thought you might like to see this part of it and all we're doing is giving a key coat that's all just a key coat so I'll just stand that to dry for a few seconds come in and do the same on this one and so far everything is looking pretty good no complaints again I'm not using um, gloves I seem to be getting a bit of a splash for some reason that flattens itself out do that again, I wonder where that is. Might be down to me. No, I'm going to have to do something about that. Right. If you do have a problem like this, um, I, this is in short supply at the moment. I've had this for quite a while. So it's isopropyl and alcohol, and it just takes off what I've just put on there, to be honest. And it'll dirty it up. But it will also get rid of all them splashes that just occurred like so get rid of all that paint all off just like so okay right quick look at the airbrush to see what's going oh I see That isopropyl all away. A little bit of my airbrush cleaner. I've seen what the issue is, so it's easily fixable. It's down to me. I should have cleaned the airbrush out better. I'm just taking out something there. Now, although the air cap should in reality stay there. I'm not going to let it, I'm going to move it off like so. It looks rough, but it's just really thin paint on there, so it's not a problem. And at least you'll be able to see the primer doing its job. So you can see what I'm doing. Just giving it a good prime. Not too heavy, just something for the paint to react to, and I'm happy with that now. Okay, all right, let that dry a few minutes. I'll clean the airbrush out, give it a good clean, and then come back. Sounds like Dudley's got a mate turned up. Give it a clean, and then come back, and I'll go a little bit further. Right, okay, right, so we're all set, we've got our Alcloud Matte Black, which is brilliant for doing what I'm now going to do, which is literally, to pick the wrong one up, oh, I don't want that, excuse me, about 102, Superb for doing what I'm doing now. It's very thin, so it doesn't make a ripple in your paintwork. Um, it's literally just a black paint. So, what we're going to do tiniest amount in the colour cup, put the lid back on, take our nose, our uh, needle protector off, like I should have done in the first place. Now all I'm going to do 
let's just do some very very fine work I'm just going to what they call pre-shading I'm not an advocate of the marble shading I could never understand going through all that work to lose it under paint I admit it works but it's not for me so I do I've always pre-shaded that's the way that I learnt through videos years ago and I'm still learning today. Anybody who say they aren't, they're fibbing. So all I'm doing is if it's needed, I'll just pre-shade it in. Okay. Uh, all the bands you've got to remember these drop tanks fill tanks were used more than once they did get dirty, scratched they are aluminium they're not like the paper ones you get on a Mustang so They did get scratched up, they did get messed up, they did get dirty. So, I'm not trying to make it uniformed. That's not how it works. But there you go. Nearly there. A couple more bits just to add a little bit of texture to. And on the top. So that's basically it I'm just going to do the other one you know you can see two being done and then come back and we'll start putting some color on it okay right so we're going to put some color on this booty now this will be the same bottle I will use the underneath of the aircraft and a film well I'll explain that in a moment or two but right so we've got Hellblau this is ALCE 214 RLM 65 Hellblow or Pale Blue in English. Now, the reason that I stand by these colours and know they are correct is because that wasn't some guy in China making them, uh, making the actual pigments and matching the colour. It was me. I matched every single one of the Alclair colours to what they are today. They're matched with a very, very, very low tolerance, or high tolerance, whichever way you will look at it. So, I will stand by every colour in the range and the brand. And now I can be 100% happy these colors are correct for the date so that's why I can put on them the FS colors the RLM colors the RAL colors and so on um, what's the other one uh, 318C BS 318C but there you go so that's why I stand by everything that I do right what we're gonna do now is put a layer of our hell blow down now, again, compressors set about 10 psi. I don't like spraying alclad paint too much higher than that. It is very thin and it will spider if you try and blast it on like you do acrylics. Acrylics have their place, but not in my modeling room. Well, that's a lie, because I have got some acrylics that I use specifically, as I've said before, for detail work with a brush but again Alclad uh, are looking to bring out the whole range in brushables as well 
which is looking to come hopefully fairly soon. Okay, so all we're doing is putting a very thin coat on just to see how the pre shading is going to come through. So I want this to be a little bit not dirty, dirty, but be able to be seen that it's being used. I'm just putting, like I say, a light coat on. Nothing spectacular. You're just building it up. Going along. Like I said, I don't want it to show up too much, but I don't want it to be so you can't tell it's there. The idea of well, it's a lie. The pre-shade, the idea of pre-shading is just to take away, in my opinion, this is to take away the look from a die as it would be a die cast model. So there you go. I hope you can see that. Oh, nearly tipped the paint over. Just put that to one side in the airbrush holder. Now, hopefully, you can see that and see how well the pre shading is showing through. How long did that take? I don't know, a couple of minutes just to play around. I'll let that one dry. I'll do the other one off camera and then come back and do the other part that I've got to do to it. Thank you.